we all be dead. Drug addicts, alcoholics, partiers, be married ten times, who knows. Listen to what Joshua said. Joshua said unto the people, he says this, You cannot serve the, the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after he had done you good. Listen to what he says. You cannot serve God like this, Joshua said. He's a holy God and he's a jealous God. He will not forgive your sins or your transgressions. See, God is not a fool. If you forsake him and turn and serve someone else, he will turn and do your hurt and consume you that you have done good. And the people say to Joshua, Nay, we will serve the Lord, Joshua. Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves, that you have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him, and we are his witnesses. Now therefore put away the strange gods which are among you, and position, incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. Notice he said heart, not mind. You serve God with your heart. Yes. Yeah. You serve God with your heart. We're going to have a heart washing at the end of this very quickly. We're going to get our hearts washed. And you're going to tell who's, who's, who's washing who's not real quick. People said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we, will we serve. Listen to this, verse 24. The Lord our God will we serve, and His voice will we obey. Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and he set a statute in their Lord's in Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. He took a great stone and set it up under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. For you have heard all the words of the Lord, which he spoke unto you on this day, that it should be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. Joshua was a great leader. He stood up to his people and he told them something they did not want to hear, but they had to hear. He stood up strong in the Lord and courage that comes from obeying God, knowing that God has his back and said, serve whom you will choose this day to serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Yes. And he challenged every family on that day. Who will you serve this day? <clears throat> if you serve him, put away everything of your whole life. Mm -hmm. And look to him and serve him. Yes. Don't debate him. Don't analyze him. Don't butt him. Don't say, Ma, I have a better way. He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our advice. He doesn't need our opinions. All he says is obey my voice. Can we do that? Before you say yes, if God says, go to your work, I have a better job for you, quit your job tomorrow, will you do it? Or are you going to say, but I've been in the job 10 years and I got pension. What did we just got through saying? Why does God make it so tough on us? Because God is going to test us, folks. Yeah, he is. You think, God, you think God likes, he doesn't play around and say, you know what? I didn't mean what I said. You know, I forget what I said. We do that. But he doesn't. So be ready for God to test our commitment. But here's the good news. God is always going to do better for you. He's going to give you better things, better. He's going to take out old people in your life and put new people in your life. He's going to take out the weeds and get, give you fruit. He's going to take out the wicked and give you good. He's going to take out all the negativity and give you positive. God, God, I'm at the, here's the thing. And if God says it's time for you to go, Guess what? We're going. But my friend, what did he tell Abraham in Genesis about a new land? What did Abraham have to do? What did God tell Abraham to do? 
He says, you get up, you and your family, you're going. Abraham got up. He didn't ask his wife. He told his wife, the woman. Remember that, Mr. Ed. Be strong. Tell your wife, we're moving. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with him. Oh, let me let me refer you to Lot's wife before you have. Let me refer you to Lot's wife. Ask her what happens when you don't obey God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Woo, Peter and his brother mending nets. God says, "Come, follow me." What did they do? Did they say, "Hold on, let me go tell Daddy that we're going to go away for all"? God no, they says, left. "They left." You know what Jesus says? Forget your Daddy. You get up and you follow me. Amen. You, you don't, you're not, uh, you're my servant now, okay? Mm -hmm. But daddy, I gave you your daddy, okay? Daddy's time is over. You serve my daddy now, amen? Yeah. See, a lot of people don't want to leave. Are you willing to leave those things behind? Let me ask you, I'm going to be very honest with you. Are, are you willing to leave those things behind? Or are you not ready to grow yet? Do you want to stay circling around the promised land or do you want to get to the promised land? Amen. Who will you serve today? And if God says you go where you go where I, I tell you to go, or you stay where I tell you to stay, you're going to stay here. He may tell you that. You can't be with this person, okay? Yes, sir. You need to be with that person. But I don't like him. I don't care if you like him. I don't care. He may not look hot. He may. She may not look sexy. But guess what? That's the one I picked for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God's gonna test us. I can't wait. Can you? Lord, test me first. Because that's the only. I want to be a good leader. I just don't want to be a passable leader or an average leader. I want to be a leader like Moses and Joshua. Lord, I want these people to be your leaders too. Men with it, and women too, women are leaders. They're the leaders of the household too. They're the leaders, their examples are godly. Ah. You know what the greatest victory, let me let me tell you this. You know what the greatest victory that Israel ever had? Ah. Was it Samson? No. Samson? No. The greatest victory that Israel ever had was by a woman named Deborah. She went to her second in command and said, I want you to lead this army. I, guess, I think it was the Amorites or the Malachites. And I want you to fight them. He says, I'm not going to go because I'm a chicken. That's basically what he said. I'm a chicken. And I don't want to lose. Deborah says, okay, I will go with you and I will be ahead of you in that battle. You will follow me and you will win this battle. But let it be known that a woman gave you this victory, right? That's right. So Deborah, all skinny Deborah, with a prayer shawl, hands clasped, went off against the fiercest armies of Israel's enemies. And she led them to that victory because she had faith, guts, and courage to do it. Amen? Amen. A woman did that. Praise God. Yeah. So don't tell me that women are useless and don't tell me that women don't know anything. They do. Don't get big-headed now. Okay? Let's, let's, let's knock you down a bit or two, right? No. That's okay. But see, Deborah submitted to God, or Deborah wouldn't have any victory either. Amen? That's right. Amen. Let's bow our heads. You people that are watching, if you want a spirit-filled revival, if you want the real truth, I'm not going to give you prosperity preaching. Okay? I'm not Joe Holstein. I'm not Benny Hand. I'm not any of those characters. I'm a real flesh and blood preacher. Filthy liquor. <laughs> I don't have anything. Okay, I have nothing. But all I have is what God gives me. Crosswalk Community Church. Seven. Number seven. Crosswalk Community Church seven at gmail.com. If you want me to come in your area. I don't care if it's Ohio, California, Georgia. You people in California, you need the gospel bad. You're way out there. New York, you're the, you're the Babylon, all right? You need the gospel. God will make a way. Well, we can't go there. I'm not, I'm not listening to y'all. 
I'm listening to him. Yes. All right, let's get that straight. I will go there and I will preach the gospel like this. If you like this, if you want this, I'm a phone call away or call me on Gmail. Okay? God will make a way. I'll be your Joshua. I will lead you. If your church doesn't have leadership, I will lead you. I will have a revival and I will come back home. This is the church that he gave me, so I'm going to pass through this church. You can come follow us home. Amen? <laughs> follow us home. We got room. My first is the crosswalk. They're my people. They're the ones I lead first. They're my first responsibility. But you're more, I will go there and share the gospel with you. I'll do it. I'll do it. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, this is the day of decision for us. Now some of us thought we had made the decision that says we will serve you. It's one thing to say something, but another thing to do it. You have shown us in the Bible about Joshua. He was a mentor. Moses mentored him, second in command. He learned all the ways. But on that one day, he stood up, Lord, and he said, Whom will you choose, whom will you choose this day to serve? And he says, As for me, my house will serve the Lord. And he did it until his dying days, until he went home. Heavenly Father, some of us here, ourselves, or we know of somebody that is at a crossroads right now. We've been struggling in this life. We've been going around and around the promised land that you promised us because we have not focused on you. We have not fully focused on you. And for some reason, we keep on going in circles. And the reason is, is that we have not obeyed you. And we have not trusted you. Fully. We can't get by with 40 or 50%. It has to be 100%. It has to be everything. If it's not everything, then it won't happen. We have to get rid of every false God, everything in our lives that you're not happy with. And if we're holding on to one thing that you're not happy with, it will impede us and stop us from growing and going anywhere. Lord, when you call us to service, when you, when you saved us, you saved us not only from sin, but from ourselves. Lord, I think, and I know this, and I speak for myself first, we could all do better in leaving those things behind. It's time that we start serving you. It's time that we leave the past, the past. That it's dead, it doesn't exist anymore. If it doesn't exist in your eyes, it shouldn't exist in ours. Lord, help us to obey you. We obey everything else but you sometimes. We listen to our best friends' advice, our families, but we don't listen to you. Let us listen to you and only you and ignore everyone else. Let's be blunt about it. For you love us more and better than anyone or anything else. Your love is the only love that we need to, to, to grow and to be passionate, Lord. Your love is the love that saved us from hell. Your love is the love that saved us from our sins. Your love is the love that has saved us permanently and forever. Your love did that. You're the one that died on the cross. It's your heaven. It's your word. It's your salvation. It's your blood. It's your life. It's you. It's all about you, not about us. We don't have a life unless you're in it. And we don't have a future or vision unless you are in it. So this day, Lord, we don't know. You all, you know the hearts and minds of your people here. These are your people. I'm only the messenger, and I need them. But these are your people. Lord, bless them. Forgive them. Have mercy on them. Lead them. Guide them. Protect them. And whatever is in their life holding them back, clean it out permanently and fully. And if they're going in circles, help them to stop on this day and start going into the promised land by first obeying you. And we thank you. Forgive us for our sins, Lord Jesus. And we pray for those that do not know them as Lord and Savior. For all the little souls out there that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
this is why we're doing this, to bring them to the knowledge and to bring them to the feet of Jesus so that they can repent of their sins and turn their life over to Him and trust in His blood, in His blood only for salvation. That is the reason why we're here. It's not for ourselves. It's for you. All of you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.